to everyone. We hope you're having a fantastic day. It's a little rainy outside, a little cloudy, but God is still good because he woke us up to a brand new day. He woke us up to another day to say thank you. Another day to give him praise. Another day to say, God, I glorify who you are. And we want to thank you and your families for just checking back in with us another Monday. And we want to let you know that we're here every Monday morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10.30 Central. You are now listening to the Reading Room Radio Show, where your host is Minister Myron Whitaker. In just a bit, we're going to get ready to hear from the man of God. And we thank you again. We want you to hit that share button to your social media page, whether it's via Facebook, 
Instagram, Twitter, or the email your the link to somebody in your group. Once again, we thank you all for tuning in, and we say God bless you, and continue to enjoy, and we'll be back. Mr. Myron Whitaker, and I welcome you to the TMA radio broadcast of the Reading Room. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, come on in the room. The Reading Room doors are now open. Happy Monday to you. Glad to have you tuning in to the TMA radio broadcast of the Reading Room with your host, that's me, Minister Myron Whitaker. We're going to be doing a brief reading today from Isaiah 43, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and after that we'll begin this morning's reading. Heavenly Father, I come before you as humble as I know how. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to once again declare your word. And now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless the words of my mouth, that I might rightly divide the word of truth according to your scripture. In so doing, let God be glorified, and the ears of them that hear it be edified. And I thank you right now, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done, what you're now doing, and what you have planned for our future. For the very breath in our lungs, we give thanks. We beseech you, Heavenly Father, to forgive us. Where we have sinned against you, grieving your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you judge us not according to our transgressions. But let your grace and mercy work its perfect will in us to your glory. We continue, Heavenly Father, to pray on behalf of those who are afflicted and who have lost loved ones to this COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for everyone in the hospital, in the nursing home, bedridden at home. We pray for everyone who has afflictions in the mind, spirit, and body, that you would open up the windows of heaven and let your Holy Spirit move in a mighty way and affect healings for everyone meeting them at the point of their need. We pray for the healing of this nation and all nations. We pray, Heavenly Father, that all who are chosen to govern do so wisely so that all people may live in peace. We reaffirm and recommit to be steadfast in the spreading of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be his faithful ambassadors. Now unto the true and living God, Father of the crucified and risen Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, I give glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let us open up the book and take a look at today's reading. Y'all go ahead. I hope you got your, your, your coffee, your latte ready your herbal tea, your flavored water. Go ahead and take this this 20-minute break just before lunch. (laughs) It's 11.30 a.m. here on the East Coast. 10.30 a.m. Central Time. So y'all just kick back, relax before you go and get some physical food. By the grace of God, we're going to impart some spiritual nourishment into you this Monday morning. Coming from the prophet Isaiah, the theme here in Isaiah 43 is the redemption of God's chosen nation. From the beginning, God chose Israel to be his chosen 
nation. The theme of redemption of Israel in Isaiah 43 appears 22 times in this book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah, I mean, Isaiah writes about the deliberate rejection of the Lord as a sovereign king. Israel has constantly you know, turned his back on the Lord. First they had judges, but they wanted to be like everybody else around them. And they wanted kings, and it kind of hurt God's heart. He said, I am the king of all kings. I am the sovereign king. But no, they wanted to be like everybody else. They wanted to conform to the traditions of men. But God continued to hold Israel dear as his chosen people. And he said that he would redeem them from physical and spiritual bondage. And that in the end, God would redeem Israel and gather all Gentile nations unto him. So that's the basic theme that runs through Isaiah 43, the redemption not only of Israel, but of all nations at the end of the age. So as we open up the book and take a look, we begin with Isaiah 43, Isaiah chapter 43, and I'll read it in its entirety. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So Israel is very special in God's heart. He formed them and he ransomed them with his own self and he's called them by name they are his when you go through deep waters I will be with you when you go through rivers of difficulty you will not drown when you walk through the fire of oppression you know about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego you will not be burned up that the king threw them in the fire for praying to the true and living God, they refused to pray to idols. And he threw them into the flaming furnace, heated it up seven times hotter than it normally would be. And he threw them in the furnace. And after a time, he went to check on them. <laughs> and he saw them walking around in a circle. And there was also another man-like image appeared with them. And when they came out, they were not singed. There was not even a smell of smoke <laughs> in their clothes. So God promised to Israel, when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. That's powerful. All the nations that stood before Israel before they were named Israel, they were the Hebrew people. They came up out of Egypt, and every enemy that they met, as they pursued, as they were pursued by the Egyptians, and all other enemies that surrounded them, every kingdom that they went through, they were victorious, until they turned their back on God. And when they did, God turned them over to their enemies. So they were precious. He tells them in chapter, in verse four. I traded the lives of other nations for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. God honored Israel above all nations and he showered them with his love. Verse 5. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west. I will say to the north and south, 
bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Bring out the people who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. Gather the nations together. Assemble the peoples of the world. Which of their idols has ever foretold such things? Which can predict what will happen tomorrow? Where are the witnesses of such prediction? Who can verify that they spoke the truth? But, better understand this, you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant, God's servant nation. You have been chosen to know me. Believe in me, and I understand that I alone am God. There is no other God. Get your highlighters out. <laughs> There is no other God. There never has been and there never will be. I, yes, I am the Lord. And that's spelled in all capital letters, L-O-R-D. That is, that is Jehovah Yahweh speaking himself. He says, yes, I am the Lord. And there is no other Savior. He was referring to the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the triune God, the Trinity. First, I predicted your rescue. Then I saved you and proclaimed it to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. You are witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. If you are a child of God, none can snatch you out of his hand. As he has chosen you to be a child of God, a kingdom citizen, no one can undo what he has done. Verse 14, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, that is Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel, that's God himself, that's the Father, for your sakes I will send an army against Babylon, forcing the Babylonians to flee in those ships they are so proud of. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I call forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned, their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But, better understand this, verse 18, forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wastelands. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and owls too for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Verse 22. But Dear family of Jacob, you refuse to ask me for help. You have grown tired of me. 
He's saying that sarcastically. You have grown tired of me, O Israel. You have not brought me sheep or goats for burnt offerings. You have not honored me with sacrifices, though I have not burdened and wearied you with requests for grain, for other offerings, and frankincense. You have not brought me fragrant calamus or pleased me with the fat from sacrifices. Instead, you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your faults. I, yes, I alone will blot out your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. Y'all remember how the old folks used to say, God will not only forgive but forget, for he'll cast everything into the sea of forgetfulness. Verse 25, he's going to blot out Israel's sins for his own sake and will never think of them again. He'll never bring it back up and accuse them. Let us review the situation together. And you can present your case to prove your innocence. From the very beginning, your first ancestor sinned against me. That's Adam. All your leaders broke my laws. That is why I have disgraced your priests. I have decreed complete destruction for Jacob and shame for Israel. Chapter 44. But now listen to me, Jacob, my servant. My servant Israel, my chosen one, the Lord who made you and helped you says, do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant. O dear Israel, my chosen one, for I will pour out water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched fields, that both physical and spiritual. <laughs> and I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your children they will thrive like watered grass like willows on a river bank some will proudly claim i belong to the lord others will say i am a descendant of jacob some will write the lord's name on their hands and will take the name of israel as their own this is what the lord says israel's king and Redeemer, the Lord of Heaven's army. I am the first and the last. There is no other God. <clears throat> Who is like me? Let him step forward and prove to you his power. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let him do as I have done since ancient times. When I establish a people and explain its future. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim my purpose for you long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any other God? No. There is no other rock but one. How foolish are those who manufacture idols? These prized objects are just really worthless. The people who worship idols don't know this, so they are all put to shame. Who but a fool would make his own God. An idol that cannot help him one bit. All who worship idols will be disgraced along with all these craftsmen, mere humans who claim they can make a God. They may all stand together, but they will stand in terror and shame. The blacksmith stands at his forge to make a sharp tool, pounding and shaping it 
with all his might. His work makes him hungry and weak. It makes him thirsty and faint. Then the woodcarver measures a block of wood and draws a pattern on it. He works with chisel and plane and carves it into a human figure. He gives it human beauty, beauty, excuse me, and puts it in a little shrine. Hmm. He cuts down cedars. He selects the cypress and the oak. He plants the pine in the forest to be nourished by the rain. Then he uses part of the wood to make a fire. With it, he warms himself and bakes his bread. Then, yes, it's true. He takes the rest of it and makes himself a god to worship. He makes an idol and bows down in front of it. He burns part of the tree to roast his meat and to keep himself warm. He says, ah, oh, that fire feels good. Then he takes what's left and makes his god a carved idol. He falls down in front of it, worshiping and praying to it. Rescue me, he says. You are my God. Such stupidity and ignorance. Their eyes are closed and they cannot see. Their minds are shut and they cannot think. The person who made the idol never stops to reflect. Why? It's just a block of wood. I burned half of it for heat and use it to bake my bread and roast my meat. How can the rest of it be a God? Should I bow down to worship a piece of wood? The poor deluded fool feeds on ashes. He trusts something that can't help him at all. Yet he cannot bring himself to ask, is this idol that I'm holding in my hand a lie. Pay attention. God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. The reading from Isaiah chapter 43 to Isaiah 44, 21, ending with pay attention. Something to ponder. Is this idol that I'm holding in my hand a lie, whatever that idol may be. Pay attention. There is only one, for there is no else like him. He is the first and the last. There is no other. There was none before him. There will be none after him. The Lord God Jehovah, Israel's King and Redeemer, Lord of Heaven's armies. He had made Israel a special and chosen nation unto him. And he said not only would he redeem Israel from their transgressions, from their sins, but he would gather even the Gentile nations unto him before the end of the age. Amen. God bless the reading and the hearing of his word on this Monday morning. I know y'all are getting ready to go to lunch, so I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> sign off so y'all can go ahead and Get yourself something to eat and refresh yourself. <laughs> mm, I'd like to thank all of you, whoever you are, wherever you're from, for your support of the TMA radio broadcast and the reading room. We broadcast every Monday, the reading room, at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10.30 Central Time. And this is on the TMA radio broadcast. I'd like to thank my co-worker <laughs> in the army of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Pastor Nino Ackridge and his lovely first lady. Thank you all for inviting me on board. Thank all the pastors, ministers, teachers, regardless of your title. We thank you for being steadfast in your commitment to declaring the word of God to all who have ears to hear. And now as I get ready to part, Always remember to protect the temple, y'all. Know ye that your body is the temple of the living God. His Holy Spirit dwells within you. Wear your mask, people. Make sure you carry sanitizer on your person. Sanitize your hands frequently throughout the day. Wash continuously. And be sure to wear gloves 
when you pumping gas at the gas station. You never know who coughed or sneezed over that gas handle before you got there. So protect the temple. Wear your mask, wear your gloves, sanitize and wash often. Just be safe out there, okay? And as you're driving on the streets and highways, please be courteous to the other drivers. Do not drive distracted. And above all else, watch out for those loose nuts behind the wheel. And I pray to God that you won't be one of them. God bless you and God keep you. And as always in parting, God loves you and I do too. Peace. You've been listening to the Reading Room Radio Show that was your radio host, Minister Myron Bittaker. And once again, we want to thank you and your families for joining us this Monday morning. And we hope you have been blessed by the broadcast. We hope that something said touched you in a special way on today. God's word is, God word is so good to us. It's, it's a, a light unto our path. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a guidance and protection. It gives us peace, a, a, a sense of hope that we believe in all things, all scripture. Amen. Which is the breath of God. So we thank God for all of you again. We pray something amazing happened to you today. Hey, if you got a testimony, man, you know, we haven't did testimony in some years now. It would be great to have you guys to write us and share your testimonies uh, where we can read them over the airways. If you have a testimony, go ahead on and write this email down. Pastor Eckridge 2016 at gmail.com. That's Pastor Eckridge, A-K-R-I-D-G-E. 2016 at gmail.com. Once again, that email address is Pastor Accurate 2016 at gmail.com. Send us your testimonial, amen, testimony, and we will read that to our listeners. We never know who will be blessed by the testimonies that we have. If we share them one to another, somebody might be dealing with what you're dealing with, but hey, guess what? They see you made it, now they are sure that they can make it. So send those testimonies in if you have them. Pastor Akris2016 at gmail.com. Until next time, coming up at 12 o'clock, the men to make us. It's the men's talk back is on Wednesday night. But to, uh, coming up at 12 noon is the Kingdom Center video show. With your radio host, Pastor Clinty and Evangelist Deborah Wilkins. All right, guys, we're beating up the horse <laughs> before the buggy. Or the cart before the buggy. Yeah, there you go. All right, then, we'll see you in just a bit. Take care.